Buff Nation. Let's go. Welcome in to DMBR Buffs Primetime. We are hey. presented by... Oh, go ahead. Illegal Pete's. Yes. Our, uh, our favorite place for burritos, buddies, and beers. Mm, so good. Uh, you know, this show, we're all about accountability. Hand up. I was twerking. It's all right, I was man. twerking. That's why we're late. You know, like... I appreciate that. When it's not my fault, I'll tell you it's not my fault. When it is my fault, it was my fault. To be fair, I was working on something else, but it's not an excuse. Not an excuse. I mean, the man just grinds. I mean, I appreciate the accountability, though. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great showing of your character. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> um, today or well, yesterday, I don't know about you, but yesterday really had me feeling like it was the off season. Yeah. Yeah. But. But today, 100 days until TCU, Ryan. Ooh. We, well, that's not that many. We exit triple digits after today, and we begin the slow, methodical countdown to kickoff. And speaking of TCU, what day is it? What day of the month is it? 25th. There is a benchmark coming up very soon, June 1st, mm -hmm. that we need to, to come around before we can uh, announce our plans for TCU. But this will not be a spring game situation where yes. we push back and push back and push back and push back. Um, very soon after June 1st, we'll be announcing our plans for TCU, which are going to be so sick. I can't so wait. Sick. And I'll just say something for everyone. Something More for surprises everyone. even for me? Um, I don't know if you'll be surprised, but there is something for everyone. Let's go. I can't wait. Um, so we begin the countdown. Yesterday, though, single game tickets went on sale. Yes. For uh, Folsom Field. Yes. And uh, the corn fans, of course, migrated and assembled on the CU ticket mm -hmm. office. But a lot of them came away going, these are just too yeah, much. Yeah, a lot of broke boys I in think, Nebraska. So before, you were kind of nervous about keeping the red out. I feel like <sighs> yesterday was a good sign, though. It was a good sign, and I don't think there's really that many things available. Mm -hmm. um, like, there's not that many tickets available, even if they got all of them. I still don't think it would be as egregious as it's been in the past. Um, but it was nice to see them saying, I'm not paying for Coach Prime's contract with these ticket prices. <laughs> yes. I literally saw that like set that exact comment word for word. I almost thought it was a bot response. Literally. Because that exact comment was like copy and pasted seven times under the same tweet. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> like, we don't care. They, it's, I mean, like critical thinking is hard for them. Yeah, it's true. So I think that they actually think they are paying Coach Prime's salary when they buy these tickets. Hey, Whatever, uh, whatever keeps them out and honestly makes them feel bad, even if they get there, almost as bad as they're going to feel when they walk out with another L. Another L, yep. And then next year, we'll just go into there and kick their ass again. Last time uh, when we beat them, it's a glorious game, honestly. Um, a, hi a highly recommended watch for anyone who hasn't seen it before. Like, oh, crazy plays. Uh, I'm talking like a 98-yard flea flicker touchdown. Yep. Uh, I'm talking, you know, like a perfect fade ball to tie the game late. I'm talking LaVisca Chenault almost returns a kick, then gets stripped from behind. Like, it, the game just had everything. Um, anyways, as we're walking out, you know, I'm talking my shit to Nebraska fans. I don't, I don't remember what I said to him. But this, this Nebraska fan turns around and goes, why don't you go <laughs> climb a mountain and smoke some weed? And I was like, that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's just Saturday, bro. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. That's, that's, a, an, that's an off-season Saturday. It's supposed to be a diss? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. They're a special bunch, aren't they? Yes. Uh, Willie Gaines had a tweet. Uh, quite a few guys have tweeted out stuff like this. Um, but he said... Um, sorry, signed into the wrong account. What? What? <laughs> I'm signed into the wrong Twitter account, so I went to profile and it wasn't oh, okay. there. It's right here, though. He said, LV package will be shipped overnight on Saturday. Oh, let's go. Let's Hashtag go. we coming. Love to hear it. Uh, plenty of guys, though. It's, it's about that time. Yep. They're going to start showing up, and this is one of the many <laughs> boxes on the or boxes we have to check. 
before we get to fall camp? 100 days, check. Yep. Players Fellas showing coming up. through, check. Let's go. It's about to ramp back up. Absolutely. Um, okay. So we will do our Dark Horses draft here very shortly, but we do have some portal news, Ryan. Okay. We had a portal entry today that I think is very notable. Josh Wallace. Tell me more. Former UMass cornerback. Okay. Has been playing there the last four years since 2019. In that time, 137 total tackles, three tackles for a loss, three interceptions, 24 passes defensed, and two fumble recoveries with one forced. Six foot 190. He enters the portal today, assumedly as a grad transfer. Was a two time team captain as what well. What was the height? Six foot. Okay. 190 out of Bowie, Maryland. Let's go. Um, corner is pretty stacked. Yes. But do you think we have one more spot open for a, this guy? Was an all independent last year. Um, one of the better cornerbacks in the G5, it seems. Yeah. I mean, I think honestly, you're in BPA mode. Mm -hmm. um, there's no glaring holes. Um, the one place where I think you wanted to add a little more that you haven't yet is offensive line. But I think we are at the point now where there isn't a lot of great options out there at the offensive line. So what do you do? You look around and you say, we've got eight scholarships. How do we use these? And if you see a player, I mean, truly any player who you think could be a contributor for you on special teams, mm -hmm. uh, could be a nice depth piece for you in the secondary and maybe has the upside to start. You just get them. Yep. So that's kind of, in my opinion, why we're seeing so many safeties, uh, so many defensive linemen, so many corners is just take the guys that you like at this point. Remember, the, the roster is constructed. There is no more, oh, shit, who, we got to find someone to fill this spot. Right. Or this position is, is very thin. They could play a game tomorrow. Yes. So right now you're just saying, okay, we just need to fill spots, which is what was my biggest point all along when everyone said, oh, my God, they're going to go into the season with 60 scholarship players. was like, they're not looking for starters anymore. Mm -hmm. They find one. That's incredible. They're looking for guys. They need guys. They need the right attitude. They need the right approach. They need the right, you know, um, understanding. And you're going to miss on some just what happens but you got a roster full of 85 guys by the end of this you don't need all of them to hit right uh matt says it's boo wee maryland also i learned it's you say? uh bowie okay it's spelt b-o-w-i-e of course also i found out it's Kyrie mans Kyrie. okay Kyrie. yes fair shout out brian howell for letting me know thanks brian um okay and then i mean we're in it's may 25th you, the portal's kind of done, right? But we just had this guy, Josh Wallace, we talked about. Yep. Tomorrow, Miles Rouser is set to announce his commitment. Yes. This is the NMSU kid we talked about right. yesterday with his brother that plays well, there. Campbell. Yes, out of Campbell. Yes. And he, there was a quote. My apologies for not remembering what account posted this. Um, but they put out a quote from Rouser that was like, Coach Prime is the best football player of all time, and he thinks that I have NFL potential. That's exactly what I was going to get to. That oh. was from Adam. Okay. okay. Thanks, um, Adam. So he asked uh, Miles Rouser like, about, of course, his decision, but about each school who's in contention for his commitment here. Uh, a couple things about Rouser. Again, this is from Adam Monster Tiger, buffstampede.com. Says he's going to announce Friday. Talked about building relationships with staff and picking with staffs and picking a genuine relationship for his next school. He said, most importantly, I want to play for a coach and a university that stands behind me and believes in me as a person and a player. I plan to decide on the best fit for me as a person, student, and player. My ultimate goal is to get to the NFL. Love it. Uh, bottom line, I'm a dog. Uh, when asked what college coaches like about his game, they also like who I am as a person and leadership qualities. I'm very vocal on the field and know how to get my teammates going. So he posted a top six, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven schools he talks about here. Mm. The first being Cincinnati. 
He says they did a great job with Sauce Gardner, and he was from Detroit like me. I played with him at um, in youth football for the Detroit, the, the Detroit Spartans. I'm actually partnering with them for my upcoming youth mentorship program. In Colorado, he said what you said. Coach Prime, greatest DB to ever play the game, NFL Hall of Famer. He believes that I have NFL talent. Uh, LSU talked about Coach Cooks, um, who recruited him when he was at Notre Dame. Talked about New Mexico State, Coach Kill. Uh, Andre Seldon is his brother. Um, then Tennessee, Oregon, Penn State. Kind of just talked about all the coaches. But uh, I don't want to read too much into the quotes, but he wants to get to the NFL. He credited Coach Prime being the best DB to ever play the game. Yep. What, yep. What better path? There isn't one. There is not one. And a lot of people know that. A lot of people. So, I mean, if you get Josh Wallace and Miles Rouser, maybe you don't need them, but I think you really, really round out the secondary if you get oh, those two guys. Totally. And then, I mean, the one kind of wish list item for me that remains yep. is Zakari Franklin. Exactly. So, again, you've got eight. Um, in the comments, someone sa- mentioned that Neely has kind of said Coach Prime may hold on to some scholarships, which is you know traditional not every coach goes into fall camp with 85 scholarship players um you all you know we've all seen the different ways that coaches have revealed to a walk-on that they made uh you know the the they got a scholarship you know so there's always something going on uh, like that so either way you know you got rouser you get sakari franklin you get this this uh wallace guy the roster's looking good. We're feeling good. So there's your three portal, portal targets as we kind of head into the weekend. We also have this camp on Tuesday. Yes. The uh, under or the postgraduate camp for Over JUCO th- and grad transfers. Over 300 players will be in Boulder. Yep. 300. I mean, you've said it many times. 1% of that 300 is going to stand out. And if you offer one or two of those kids, yep. it's a successful camp. And you might... There might be 5% that stand out. There's a there's a clear 1%, but 5% that stands out, you got walk-on spots for, you know? Uh, Alyssa's doing work in the comments, it seems like. Yes. All right. Some trolls in there today. Uh, probably the corn fans. If you haven't noticed... Um, go to the other shot real quick, Alyssa. Right in front of us, <laughs> we've got this beautiful buffalo. Look at this thing. Um, this is from Saturday Neon, a company started by two friends and former college roommates at CU. And they make officially licensed collegiate lo- logo LED signs. They're Denver-based. Uh, they've helped Coach Prime out in Colorado yes. with some of their... We've seen just all over his... Um, Having fun with this. What are you? Oh, changing the light. Yeah. <laughs> um, in the recruiting lounge, you've seen all the neons just all over the facility now. Saturday Neon are those guys, and you can go to SaturdayNeon.com and use the code DMVR, and you'll get ten percent off your order today. Um, you also this can get this is their newest product, by the way. Oh, sweet! The mini. Awesome. We have the giant one yes. in the bar, which when I say giant. Probably as it big as this table. It would cover both of us. <laughs> it's huge. If we yes. put it in front of us. <laughs> it's uh, massive. It is massive. Uh, and they just came out with the mini, which is cool because everyone has room for that. Exactly. Uh, free shipping for orders over $200. Great Father's Day gifts. Again, SaturdayNeon.com. Shout out to those guys. Then you already know what it is. Shador's number two. Goes great on absolutely everything. You guys have been killing it. Head on over to PLBSE.com. And get your hands on Shador's number two. Make sure you use the code All City when you're there, and you'll get 10% off your first order. Um, <laughs> and then shout out to Foco, the leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise with a product line that uh, includes apparel, accessories, toys, collectibles, novelty items, and more. Great for gifts. Also another great Father's Day destination um, to pick up whatever you need for your sports fan in your life. Bobbleheads. Um, we've got the straw hats chilling over there. Oh, They've yeah. got Hawaiian shirts. Oh yeah, everything you'd need. Um, Foco Put on has your, like straw hat with the Hawaiian print under it, a Hawaiian buff shirt. 
Got out to the grill. Some Shador's yes. number two. <laughs> RG. <laughs> this reminds me. I was talking with RG uh, before the Nuggets game. Whenever I can't remember what day this was. Um, but we saw someone walking with the, the beer towers that we have here, right? Uh -huh. We were like, we need to make one of those like SpongeBob hats where you could put one on your head and just walk around oh, with it. Oh, yeah. Because it's like so hard to get a drink during a game sometimes here because oh, there's yeah, so many it gets people. Oh, insane, yeah. <laughs> just put it on top of your head. Foco doesn't have that, but they've got everything else. Um, you can get the guess, best gear around by using the link in our description. Uh, use the promo code DMVR and you'll get 10% off. All right. By the way, um, so when we first got the big buff sign, uh -huh. um, Henry and I and Dev, if you watch the Nuggets show, uh, you know Dev. Um, we're doing like a basketball season preview. Dev, mm -hmm. of course, knows ball. Yep. Uh, so we had him on with us. And we put that sign up back there. It was like before there was anything there. It was pretty early in, in when we made this the studio. And I, I honestly don't remember who put it up so i can't throw anyone under the bus but it was like very jerry rigged onto the wall middle of the show oh no it comes tumbling down but back again back then we actually put it this is we're on an extension right now of the studio so the studio yeah. must be much smaller and we used to be like right up against the wall so dev mid sentence hears it falling reaches behind his head and stops it from crashing to the ground wow. and like falling on him and rescues it. The legend of Dev just continues to grow. It's yes. crazy. Yes. The more I learn about this guy, the more I'm blown away. He is. He is a legend. He really is. Also, he knocked out uh, my, my high school, Fairview High School, out of the state playoffs oh, really? in the final four uh, in basketball back in the day. Dang. He's an assassin too, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. Man. Uh, he also killed it with the Denver Nuggets jeans. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just a legend. So good. <laughs> All right. We're doing a draft today. Um, we talk a lot about Travis. We talk a lot about Shador. We talk a lot about Jimmy, Dylan. Today, we're not going to talk about those guys. We're going to talk about the Dark Horse candidates. Yes. That will be making impact plays and making a difference for this Colorado football team in 2023. How do you want to do this? I don't have anything okay. to flip for first pick. First of all, we must establish what entails a dark horse. Okay. I say non-starter. Okay. That's a non-starter. Um, <laughs> I, to me, it just has to be like, what's a good, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. I was going to like name some media, like non in the club media wouldn't know this person's name like on three there you go <laughs> <laughs> um so i think we'll know i would say we each if if we want to we each have a challenge flag in our pocket if you pick someone that you don't think is a dark horse you can throw the challenge okay we'll leave it to the chat to see what they think okay it is funny because this chat knows ball so much yes they do that no one is like off the radar to them I feel as though almost everyone in here knows every player feels like that. So we'll get creative, but it doesn't have to be us. It's mm -hmm. them. Do they know who they are? Okay. So like if we pick a true freshman, what's the, what's the bar for a dark horse there? I didn't Not I, a four star. So I'd guess so Marion and Adam Hopkins are off the table, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Alyssa, who goes first? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just... Uh, Who has a birthday coming up? Mine's not till December. Mine's in March. <laughs> Ryan goes first. This is closer. <laughs> no, it's not. No. It just happened, though. It's, oh, it is more recent. I was going to say we could do, like, heads or tails with my phone. <laughs> You're going to throw your phone? Yeah. That's on you, you brother. Heads or tails. Heads I'll is the screen. Tails never fails. All right. <laughs> tails it is. Tails it is. All right. I'll go first. Um, okay. I'm going to go with a guy who I feel really is a dark horse because he was one of the first players to commit to this program from the transfer portal. Uh, hasn't been on the field during the spring because of an injury, but I think he's going to be an impact player. Taj Alston mm. out of West Virginia is going to be my first pick. 
Uh, do you need me to send you the spelling, Alyssa? No. Okay. But we talk a lot <laughs> about Jordan Dominic. We talk a lot about Jeremiah Brown. Um, all the other edge guys sell smalls even. We talk about more than we do Taij Alston. Yes. And he's been on the roster since January. Yes. So first pick for me, I'll send it to you right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with my riskiest pick here. Let's go. Meaning you could challenge this. Okay. I want Trevor Woods. I'll allow it. Okay. All right. I'll allow it. I want Trevor Woods because I think he is being slept on by everyone who wasn't watching 1-11 last mm -hmm. season. Uh, and I understand why being part of a 1-11 team has a lot of people questioning if there was any guys that could really go on that squad. Um, but I think Trevor Woods is a dark horse to be a big-time contributor for this team. I love it. And I hope that if Trevor himself sees this, he doesn't take it as a sign of disrespect. No. Because it's, it, to me, it's, I'm just trying to pay him as much respect as I possibly can. Um, yeah, we've had a great influx of fans, and they've had to catch up on a lot of these guys from last year's roster. Of course, we lost a lot. But Trevor, we've been saying it since the day Coach Prime was hired. This guy is going to be a contributor. He's going to be a beast. Are we snake defense. drafting? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, we'll snake draft. Go ahead. All right, good. Give me Caleb Mathis. Mm, nice. Caleb Mathis has been putting the work in yes, since he, he got here. Um, almost balled out too much in the spring game to still be a dark horse, to be honest. Uh, but he is not on a football scholarship yet. Um, was kind of, I think, if we're being honest, a lot of people just thought his name is what got him here. Mm -hmm. And watching him play... That couldn't be further from the truth. He has speed. He has work ethic. He has a relationship with Shador Sanders that is very strong, that goes back a long time. To me, watch out. For sure. Back to Trevor Woods, uh, our friend, Big Game Boomer today. Did you see this? I did. Okay. Put out Does that mean he's ineligible? I, I don't, the chat is going, uh, Jabriel says it's uh, cheating. I, w I think it's okay. I mean, I don't want to, you know, break any rules here. Someone said, like, he was, uh, he was leading tackler last season. I'll change. I can change. He was number 29 on his top 50. Big game boomer. Okay. I think I have to change. Okay. It's fine. I got my Trevor Wood shout out in there. <laughs> there you go. Move Caleb Mathis to my number one pick, and I'll pick someone else for my number two pick. I've already got my next pick, so I hope you don't snipe me here. Help me out here because I I don't have a great way of looking through this. Who was it? Morgan just, Pearson was our guy that we really loved. Yes. Okay. Yep. Morgan Pearson. Give me Morgan Pearson, number two. Um, big linebacker. Um, he played both ways, right, in high school. Yep. And super athletic. Great instincts. I think Size. he could. Yeah, exactly. I think he could be a guy who who contributes. Um, yes. Yeah, so recruited as a wide receiver, actually. What were, how are you looking at this? Uh, two four seven sports. I just okay. pulled up his page, but I no, do no, have, no. I meant like because I'm just like scrolling through the roster. I that's, feel like I should have yeah, better. I just have the roster. Okay, all right, all right. Um, but Morgan Pearson, yeah, was originally recruited as a wide receiver, then listed as a linebacker when he was re-offered by the staff and was with Coach Hart when he was taking his picture. So made the change in college. My next guy, I'm going Landon Beebe. Mm, we do not talk Landon about this Beebe. guy. No, look, when you, bring in, <laughs> when you bring in grad transfers on one year with Coach Prime, they're here to play. They're here to, I mean, nothing but work for one season. We talk a lot about this offensive line, and Landon Beebe can play all over literally every single position. Yep. He was, I think, Missouri Valley Conference is where he played, somewhere like that. But he was all conference last year at left tackle, has played guard, has played right tackle. Mm -hmm. This is a guy, I think, that just fits in wherever you need him to on the offensive line and just makes you better there. I love, I love that you love him. 
It, it makes me feel more confident Let's go. than him. Um, okay. So is it my pick then again? It should be your pick again, yes. All right. I'm going to go Shernay Estes. Oh, what a pick. <laughs> Shernay Estes, I legitimately, man. he was on my board as like a fifth round pick. I love really? that he took him in the third. Um, this guy just started like showing up in well off videos and reach the people videos, like yep. making plays. And, you know, you and I would talk about it, be like, who, who is this guy? Yes. Cause I remember he made a sick back shoulder, like one handed catch in the corner of the end zone. One of the first practices we were at. And I was like, ask this. Yeah. <laughs> who is that? Yes. Um, walk on walk on is kind of having a big off season yep. from what we've learned recently. Touchdown in the spring game. Touchdown in the spring game. Apparently putting in the work in the weight room. Yes. Um, one of the more impressive guys in the weight room this spring for the Buffs. I mean, we're kind of stacked at wide receiver. And, you know, when you have guys like Travis who are going to be playing both ways, I've talked about this before, everyone just gets a bump up kind of, even though – if you enter the season as a wide receiver six or seven, like be ready to play still because they're going to be rotating in these guys. They're going to be running off defensive backs. Travis is going to be playing both ways. You're going to need these guys. I love it. I love it. All right. I have to go back to back picks here. So I need to like buy some time to get my next pick because you didn't take my guy who I was going to pick here <laughs> again. I think this is challengeable, but I don't think you will. This guy gets no buzz and it does not add up with his production xavier weaver mm. am i am i clear am i clean that it's close i think he doesn't get talked about he really doesn't though i don't think that like you know jimmy horn was like the number two transfer wide receiver in the in the portal and he like people knew his name um he has the speed he has the highlights Xavier Weaver just like put up numbers last year and no one is like talking about him when they talk about Colorado. Because he played for a one eleven one and eleven team. Yep. And he's coming to a one and eleven team, but yep. we know that he's more than that. But I, I think because he doesn't possess any elite traits, um, other than, you know, he has really great hands. He does everything well. Exactly. Kind of reminds me of Montana Lamoni's Craig in that way. Right. Um, but just a lot more productive. Um, because he doesn't have elite speed or he's not super tall or he doesn't do like, he just hasn't really ended up in the conversation of excitement, but he's just a baller. Mm -hmm. So no, I think this is great because we talk a lot about Jimmy. We talk a lot about Travis. We talked a lot yes. about Montana. Yes. We never mentioned Xavier okay. Weaver. I'm I think I'm clear there. Yep. You have another pick. All right. Next pick. Hmm. It's hard because I think some of the Jackson State guys would fit here, but we've talked about him so much. Yeah, it Jeremiah Brown doesn't count. Yeah, exactly. He's like on the My Guys draft. <laughs> yes, exactly. Can't be on the My Guys and the Dark Horse, right. I don't think. Right. Um, okay. I am going to go make sure you don't get him. <laughs> Want him on the squad. Lifetime Dark Horse, Charlie Offerdahl. Oh, just this is this is his draft. Yes, he yes. is the steal of the draft. He was no born matter where for he this. goes. <laughs> yes. Uh, why Charlie Offerdahl? I mean, to be honest, anytime he's ever gotten a, a a tiny little slice of the spotlight, he has taken it and run with it. Mm -hmm. When he played last season, he played well. Um, when he's out there in the spring, he gets a by name. Stop the practice. Let's talk to uh, Charlie Offerdahl. Shout out from from Coach Prime. Like that carries so much weight for me. How many did we see any other player get singled out the way that Charlie Offerdahl did in in a well off video? No, definitely not. So he's he has Coach Prime's respect. Yes, and he already had my respect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He is the dark horse. Yep. Call, a, next season, we just call this the Charlie Offerdahl. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who's the next Charlie Offerdahl yes, exactly. is what we call it. Um, set a CU record for rushing yards by a walk-on last year. Really should have had, I mean, for how bad this team was, it's kind of a crime he didn't get more carries. Yes. Just to show what he could do, um, especially later in the year because he kind of fell off. 
But great pick. I'm going to go with another guy who has surprised us this spring. Uh, he has his number, and he may be starting, but we do not talk about Louis Passarello. Oh, okay. I thought and you were going if, a different way. If Coach Brew is going to put his stamp of approval on a guy, I'm 100% with him. We talk about how much this team needs a tight end, and you know maybe they do go find another tight end. But I think you walk out with Louis Passarello and you feel okay about what you have. Maybe he's not going to be the biggest contributor as a receiver, but he obviously impressed enough as a blocker to not only supplant Zico, but to earn the respect of Coach Brew, earn his number, and basically be your starting tight end. He was starting in the spring game. Great points all around. Um, you have another pick. Final pick. Um, if we can't do my guys, then just shout out to Anthony Hankerson because mm, uh, I would allow that here if you want it. Uh, he's already on my guys. I okay. can't take All him. Right. Oh man, how about I saw? Oh man, I just took that. I can't do it. Um, <laughs> I will take from London, England. Mm. Kofi Taylor Barks. Love it. Love that. Give me the 6'3", 220-pound freshman out of the NFL Academy. Um, obviously, Coach Prime is looking under every stone to find players, even in the NFL Academy over in England. And I think he found a guy in Kofi Taylor Barracks who we saw when we watched the film has a pretty damn good understanding of the game of football for someone who didn't grow up in America and didn't grow up playing football was very instinctive, quick to the ball. Um, and I think we're going to see a heavy rotation at linebacker this year. And when Des Moines and um, Levante. Levante are off the field, you've got some young guys who can come in and make some noise. Yep, I'm going to put my stamp on Kofi Taylor Barks. I love it. Honestly, Victory Johnson could have been yep. the pick here. We each took a freshman linebacker, mm -hmm. and he could have been one, two, six foot four. Yeah. I mean, shout out to Marvin Ham too. Yep. Yep, it is victory. Who's the linebacker, right? Yes, champions the okay. tight end. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm worried that this guy might have been one of your guys, which would probably disqualify him for me. So uh, I'll just say it. I think this is a transfer who made very, very few waves, um, but would make a lot of waves if he did a cannonball. And that <laughs> is Leonard Payne Jr. Ah, uh, let's go. Is he on your, your guys? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, but, all right, um, I'm safe. I'm safe. No, go ahead. You, you explain it. Yeah. Um, to, I mean, he is, I think, going to be a staple of the center of the defensive line. And when everyone was kind of like freaking out about defensive line, I just kept saying, I don't know, man. Leonard Payne Jr. looks pretty legit to me. So um, to me, you you put him in the middle. He's your kind of stopper in there. Eat up two blocks and uh, and go to work around him. Yeah, I mean, people kind of lost their mind when Jalen saw me entered the portal. They were like, oh, he's one of the only guys, you know, I don't want to lose defensive linemen. Leonard Payne is a 6'3", 300-pound man. Yes. This guy can eat double teams yes. and can influence how an offense really functions if he's just able to take up space, and anything more than that is really a bonus. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I like both of our lists. I'm so happy that Shanae Estes got picked. Uh, or Chernet? Chernet. Chernet, okay. Mm -hmm. um, that is a, that's a fun list. It's a fun I love list. it. This Feels is like great. your list is getting more love than mine. I think it's so. Right. We'll it's post right. it on socials. We'll see. It's all right. Mine got more love than the my guys. Uh, barely. <laughs> <laughs> By a hair, 52 to 48. Um, all right. What, you want to do some, uh, some honorable mentions? Let's do it. Yes, please. This was fun. Okay. Uh, I want to... I, I was considering Isaac Hurtado okay. and Marvin Ham. Okay. Um, two guys that, you know, earned their numbers in the spring. Okay. How about Cole Boschia? Oh, yes. This yes. guy is out there mossing kids. Yes. Um, oh, what was another one that I was looking at here? Um, I had to give a shout out to Dante Capolongo. Yes, of course. Brandon Spano loves him. Yep. <laughs> um, was a teammate with uh, Charlie, I believe, right? Yeah, uh, at Dakota Ridge? Sounds right. Um, let me see. Yep, Koopa Longo, Dakota Ridge. Yeah. A couple other guys. Um, Does Isaiah Jada count? 
Maybe. I don't know. Was he starting in the spring game? He was, I don't know about for the spring game, but he was rotating. Oh, here's ones. one that I wanted to give, give a shout out to. Eli Yelverton. Yes. I was going to pick him, but yep. I just took Louis Passarello. So yep. I was like, ah, I can't. Yep. Um, <laughs> Brady says, thank God Dre isn't here to bring up Finnis. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I, I also wanted to, I had a, as a dark horse, Mark Vassette. Let's go. Turn the punting game around, yes. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Worst punting team in the nation last year. I don't know if that's factual, but it sure felt factual. Wait, actually, great pick there. Yeah, that's a. Uh, if he, he's just like slightly above average, we'll love him, dude. He set. Uh, he was setting Louisville punting records. Let's go. Now he gets to punt at altitude. Yeah. Uh, unleash the Aussie. Yes, exactly. A few more freshmen. Um, Tajay McCoy. I feel like we liked his freshman or his uh, senior tape a lot. Yep. I was between. I almost took Caleb Faria instead of Louis Passarello. I like Caleb Faria as well. Um, that's who good, that's else? a good list. Yeah, I think, I think we kind of hit it all. Yeah, I think we did too. Would It'd be fun to look back at this at the end of the season. Yeah. Someone remind us at the end of the season. Like, let's go back and look at the dark horse draft. See who who showed out. Would um. Who's Anna Luke? Oh, would Van Wells count at all? So I thought of Van Wells, and it was I think he just fell under the Woods clause, which is like he yeah. was too good last year to count as a dark horse. That's true. He was all PFF first team yep. freshman. Yep. That was fun, though. That was really fun. Um, we will be posting this on the Buffs account. Go vote for your favorite team here very shortly. Shout out to Shady Rays. The sun is back in Denver. Ryan. Oh, yeah, finally. We're back to full strength. Yep, I feel alive. Me too. Uh, the shorts. Yesterday was tough, dude. Like that many days in a row of it being just like hazy. I don't know how people do it in like the Pacific Northwest. Yesterday was it really got to me yesterday. Yeah, no, I was like, was a I tough felt like day. I was just dragging myself through the day. Yeah, it was brutal. Um, it's just sad to see it all gloomy and stuff. But yeah. now we've got the sunshine. Yep. Be prepared with your shady rays. Every pair backed by lost and broken replacements. Uh, you can go to the Park Meadows Mall. Check out their entire location, or you can go to ShadyRays.com. And we have a Memorial Day sale live right now. If you go to ShadyRays.com, you'll get 35% off all sunglasses, every single pair. Um, they even have some that look like the, they're not the exact ones, but similar to the ones that Coach Prime wears. Ooh. The, you know, the like kind of mono frame, yeah. mirrored looking ones. Um, again, ShadyRays.com, 35% off. For the weekend, and you can try for yourself the Shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Um, I'm sure the smoke affected uh, enough people so that there was maybe an accident or two on the oh road, gosh. right? Yeah, it's possible. Could have clouded your vision, maybe. I had a dirtier windshield the last few days oh. because of it. If uh, one of these unfortunate drivers happens to hit you and unfortunately injure you, who do you call, Ryan? Bacchus and Shanker. Bacchus. If you, need two, smash the, if you need to sue, smash the two. Beautifully done. Bacchus <laughs> and Shanker have been helping Colorado families win for more than 25 years. No fees while they work on your case. No fees to speak to them about a case. And no fees unless they win your case and win money for you. They've won over $1 billion for their clients. You can find their neighborhood offices in Denver, Aurora, Englewood, and Fort Collins. Car accidents, motorcycle, rideshare, pedestrians, trucks. They can even help if you're injured at work. Smash the two. Call them at 222-2222 to find out if you have a case for free, Bacchus and Shanker wins. Look at Vel throwing the number in the comments. Love to see it. Love to see it. Um, yeah, what's going on here? Only 154 likes? It's, uh, He's calling us twerkers. Yeah, let's rack this up a bit. Unbelievable. <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about today? Uh, Adrian, when can the players come back and practice? Um, I don't think there's anything like keeping them from going into the IPF and just tossing the ball around or something. No, no, no. they can have, it's called PRPs, player run practices. They yep. can do that as much as they want. I'm sure we'll see, uh, some well off or I don't know, the pregame of what did you say? PFP? PRPs. PRP. Pretty soon. Uh, Elfridi, Jake and RK, who be 
Who would you be looking for in the May 30th camp? Honestly, I don't really know who's showing up. <laughs> I don't think they've really shared that information. Yeah. I'm hoping they can let me in on Tuesday, maybe let both of us in so that we can just spectate, take it in, have something to report on it, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nicholas, any news on open practice? I haven't heard anything. Nada. Radio silence. Yep. Uh, the university has been pretty quiet to my <laughs> questions recently. <laughs> uh, Jabriel, what's the name of the website to get that buff again? Saturday Neon. There you go. Saturday Neon. They are uh, for, for the buffs, by the buffs. Exactly. Uh, pretty awesome. And, and they have more than just CU, but it is cool. When you see one of these companies and you're like, oh, it started by our guys. Yep. Love that. Uh, for Matt, is it bad to be, this is, you're like the perfect person to ask this. Is it bad to be a fan of more than one college football team? I have matured in this life, Jake. <laughs> and I have, have decided I am going to try my best to not tell people how to be fans of anything. Let's go. Whatever makes you happy is what you should do. I love that. Uh, I say clearly yes, because yeah. obviously I am. I don't have a second team in anything. like, But I'm like the most traditional when it comes to my sports fan. Like I right. was just born and raised in Colorado. I only like Colorado teams. Everyone else, it's like if you're not with us, you're against us. You're the enemy. I've made one minor exemption for the Philadelphia Eagles because of yep. Allie. It's mm -hmm. just like, of course I want them to win because that'll make her happy. Right. Other than that. I'm I'm one and done everywhere. But again, maybe it's better to have two. You watch one in the, one in the morning, one in the <laughs> afternoon. I don't know. Um, for college football, I definitely think it's okay. I'm I am against like second team people. You know, oh, this is my second team. But that, but see, I'm not against. Don't be against that. I <laughs> you don't have second teams. But a lot though. of people were like. We're like a Georgia fan, and now they're a CU fan. So use their second team. I mean, okay, yeah, that's fine. But like when you're like, oh, I like the Broncos and the uh, Patriots. You know, like they're just, <laughs> just my second team. That, no, no. See, don't do this. You, when you're once you grow up a little bit, you'll realize <laughs> it's not worth it. I just feels different for pro teams. But I mean, I I grew up in New Mexico, so I define teams myself, which is why that is very different. Yep, kind of. The thing is that I've realized is like everyone has a story. And each story makes their sports fandom unique. And that's what makes sports dope. Like 30 years from now, I'm still going to be cheering for Leeds United. Right. I don't really have a reason to other than I went to London and I ended up at a Leeds United game and I had the time of my life. And I was like, oh, I'm I'm locked into this for the rest of my life now. You know, and that's what happened to other people. 30 years from now, someone will be sitting in the stands at Folsom Field. They'll be like, how did you end up a fan here? And like, well, I was always a Deion Sanders fan growing up. And I, I actually grew up being a fan of Florida State. But when when Coach Prime came to CU, I became a CU fan and I fell in love with it. And now I'm here forever. So I've decided all fandoms are legitimate as long as you're an actual fan and you, you know, you pay attention and you love the team and you support them through thick and thin, then I don't care how you got there. Okay, just don't be a Micah Parsons or a Drake. That's all I ask. <laughs> just changing up just, every other... You can't do that. I'm sorry. That is different. That's just bandwagoning whatever yes. is happening. That's different for me than like actually being a fan of multiple teams. Yes. <laughs> to answer your question, Matt, it is fine to be a, a Buffs and a Georgia fan. It's okay. Yes. We'll forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to forgive. It's just legitimate. <laughs> all right. MLN... Oh, this is a great question. Is Coach Mo's regiment going to be different for spring summer training? Does he need to shake it up? He clearly bulked up Travis and leaned rock. He is fucking killing it, yes, man. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Destroying it makes you wonder it. what the hell the people before him were doing. Literally. It's like the... But... Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, the actual tangible differences that you could see on every player, you never saw that the last few years. That's the thing. But... Give Coach Mo all the credit in the world. There's also a second variable to this, and that is the players. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why all those guys are gone now. Because, sure, a strength and conditioning coach can make a big difference. 
but you, you have to want it. And that's what we remember. We were just taught when we when they first started showing those workout videos, we're like, man, these guys are grinding. Yeah. And I said, it's because they all feel challenged. They all feel like there's someone behind them trying to take their job and they all feel like they have a chance to be a part of something special. Right. Also, Connor said, RK, a romantic for real. I am extremely romantic when it comes to sports and sports fandom. I love it. How could you not be? It's true. Beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, Coach Mo's killing it. I don't, I mean, everything he's done so far has really worked out. And to your point, it's brought, a, I think, a new mentality to the players. I mean, they obviously got rid of a lot of the old mentality, but I think he's helped really kind of change the culture and just the overall work ethic of this team. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Eli, is Daniel Ari still on the team? He is not. He, um, where did he end up going? I can't remember. He took I don't a. Think he, tra- he transferred? No, he took a UDFA contract somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I want to say Arizona. Yep, Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> Luis says RK rides for the Ecuador national team, too. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Dakota, is Kavasi a smoke on campus, or if not, do we need to worry about him with McCaskill transferring? He's been I, tweeting about the buffs. Yep. I, I'm not worried about him. Yeah, I think he's coming for sure. He's got to be showing up soon, too. And, like, I don't, like, I just don't think Coach, obviously not every person that he recruits is going to end up being a perfect Coach Prime guy, but Coach Prime is not going to be all that interested in guys who are like, well, I want to be for sure the number one running back. Right. It's like, no, you're going to I'll give you an opportunity and you're going to have to go take it. I don't think it's about being the number one running back with him. I think it's about being the veteran running back, though, which is, I think, why he put out that reminder that he was only verbally committed when Micah Bernard was visiting. Mm. He wanted to be kind of the, I guess, leader of the room. You know, he's going to be the 1B next to McCaskill's 1A. Whereas you bring in another veteran running back and that kind of gets a little bit more cloudy. That's fair. I mean, you don't transfer somewhere to sit. For sure. No one does. Yeah. And he didn't, like, he played at Kentucky. He wasn't a starter, yeah. though. Yeah. Very fresh legs. Tim, what's going on with all the Big 12 chatter? We talked about this yesterday. There's um, new stuff today, though. Oh, no. Um, but it's, it's, absta- it's unsubstantiated, so we'll give it a day to see if anything catches on. Okay. Um, oh yeah. All right. Uh, no one has Shiloh committed yet. He has not. We're waiting. He's taking his time. Always got to see you right here for you, Shiloh. Yep. If you want to come uh, <laughs> announce on the show. You see his, uh, the video of him in the Mercedes, his new Mercedes. No, it's a pretty sweet car. <laughs> oh my God. That's awesome. CJ, who do you think will start at kicker? Mm. Mm. Who are you going with? I'll go Mata. To me, he's kind of the not. This isn't the necessarily correct metaphor, but the leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, he's coming in with a lead. Um, Coach Prime trusts him immensely. That being said, Coach Prime will put in whoever he thinks is going to give them the best chance to win games. So if Jace Feely comes in and takes his job, then all the more power to him. I think we also could see a. Jace Feely, the long kicker, mm. Mata, the short kicker yeah. type of situation. Um, just from what I saw in the spring game, it's Mata. Cool. Uh, from Jake, do you feel good with our tight end room? Are you expecting much receiving yards coming from this bunch? How do you feel about it? I would have liked to add Yeah. just one. Um, there's still the – isn't there still the Juke? Gilbreath. Yeah. Connor Gilbreath. Yeah, so we still want him. Um, that would be nice. But this is not a very tight end heavy offense. And, and it, you know, Sean Lewis is the type where it's just like if you have catching a pass catching tight end that you like, then he'll get him involved in that way. If not, he'll put the tight end out there with most of their job being to block. Uh, and, and I think they have guys that can do that. Yeah. Obviously, the blocking is what they're really focusing on. Expecting many receiving yards, yeah. I mean, they didn't really put up many last year, this group of guys. But, I mean, you got these receivers for a reason, right? H-Family. 
you see the interview last night from the new Kent State lineman Jack Bailey on life and football? He's a dog and is ready to stick it to Nebraska. Love to hear that. I did not see that. Did you? No, but I'll, be, I'll watch just for that. Love that. MLN, did we catch the pregame show image of Raider-esque silver helmets? Oh, no. <laughs> First of all, the Buffs <laughs> did black and silver helmets before the Raiders even existed. So if that's the case, it will be more of a throwback than anything. Um, but, yeah, people complained about that the last time we did black and silver. And literally, there is some quote out there a story that might be told secondhand of how um al davis said like oh i like those colorado black and silver huh. yeah interesting uh, i'd rather not talk about the raiders on this show though <laughs> D- jimmy g another surgery another surgery that's not good crazy man not good at all not looking good for them it's all right josh mcdaniels has it coming true good show today um We may have a big show tomorrow. We may have a a guest in studio. Yes. Um, So stay tuned. Hopefully we can make that happen. The spirit of the buffs is pulsating. (laughs) 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 See you guys tomorrow. Let's go buffs. Let's go buffs. (laughs)